<laughs> All right. Um, I don't know why this is here, but if I don't do something about it, perhaps it's on the test. So uh, Bendix series, pressure carb, pressure carb um, designators. So we have the prefix. Uh, I have one, two, three, four prefixes. Like we have the, you know, the, we're talking about the PS5 or the PR58. So we're talking about. It's like, what, what does that mean? So the P equals pressure operated. Um, S, single barrel. The barrel is describing the throat, or the, the, the inlet, the throttle. the throttle plate. So S, singles, like the PS5, it has a single. Um, I don't even have the R on here. Uh, D is downdraft. Oh, I know what R is. I don't know why I have it on here. H is horizontal. Or as my daughter says, horizontal. That's how she remembers that it's this way because like a horse goes this way. Uh, <laughs> horizontal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had some examples. So we had the PS. The PS. What about R? Would be, R is rectangular. I don't. I didn't write it down, but. Time to put it. Yeah. Uh, that's a pressure single barrel. What would be a PSH? Pressure single barrel. Single barrel horizontal, horizontal flow flowing in this way. Um, what would uh, PSD? Pressure single barrel downdraft. Um, then we have dash number. Dash number is bore size, is bore size in one quarter inch increments. Part of me is not 100% positive about this particular thing, but so a dash one um, would equal one inch. Uh, dash two is one and a quarter. See, now we're going up in quarters because one would be the smallest. Dash three would be three and a, would be what one and a half. Um, I skipped a bunch. Dash five would be oops, then two inches. Um, dash ten is what they say the largest is, even though we have a PR fifty eight, but that's obviously something a little bit different. Um, this is in the the Bendix line would be the three point two five. That's the largest. And then there's the submodels. I kind of like this one because it gives you an idea of what's an add-on, what's not. So if you had a B, airflow operated enrichment. Right, now you know what that is. That was that parallel one. Um, C is manually operated. <laughs> Menu operated power enrichment. Um, D had an electric primer. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right, a couple questions for you. What happens if the automatic mixture control fails? I think I've already asked this before. Okay, what, ha what happens if any of the diaphragms fail? Uh, if A and B fail, it's going to run lean. If uh, A and B, that fails, you're going to lose air metering force. Run lean. Run lean. How would it run at idle? Fine. Fine. There we go, run fine. 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 Run
Not so much everywhere else. Uh, what if uh, this this right here ruptured? CD. Um, you'd have more pressure. You'd have pressure. Yeah. C. You'd have unmetered fuel. Unmetered yeah, fuel. you'd be getting unmetered fuel. And the C is going to run rich, lean. Rich. rich. Okay. There's a little seal right here. What if this little seal leaks? You're going to get fuel in B or air in your fuel. Air in your fuel. Okay, so you're going to get air. You're going to get fuel into here, actually, because this is a vacuum. Yeah. So it's going to suck fuel into here. And so it's going to run. Right. So if you were trying to adjust your idle mixture and you just couldn't manage to do it, it's always running rich, always running rich, always running rich. Could be a, a rupture in your seal and sea. Um, what else? Now we talked about what happens if the vapor float fails, open or closed. Um, I know this is on the test. Yes, I think it is. I don't know. Starting a pressure carb. Hey, idle spring opens the poppet valve. The fuel pump. So let's just say this is off right now. The engine is off. Airplane's off. Turn on the master. Got my lights and stuff on. Any problems? No. I reach over to grab my beer and accidentally hit the uh, boost pump. Oh, no. Now the boost pump's running. Okay. Boost pump's running, so. Well, if your idle mixture is out. Let's see. Like I got fuel pressure. Anything stopping me so far? Nope. No. It's going to go. So be careful. You can flood your engine. Now, if you've pulled the manual mixture control all the way back to idle, idle cutoff, mm -hmm. you're fine. But without idle cutoff, she's going to run. She's going to spray. <laughs> and you get a hydraulic lock. Yeah. And when you get a hydraulic lock, it, it, it destroys the engine. Yep. So. Bend some things. Break some things. I'll bend some stuff to see. Uh, uh, Kevin, yeah. How do you fix a hydraulic lock? You completely overhaul the engine. Okay. You get a new engine. <laughs> you get a new engine. <laughs> yep. So it is common. I do it all the time. That's on fuel injected engines. It's kind of how you start them. And you do the, you do the same thing with this. Just run the boost pump, uh, put your mixture in, you're gonna spray some fuel in there, then pull it back to idle cutoff and you can start it. And when the engine catches, push the mixture back in, you're off and running, so not a big deal. All right, water injection. I'm just gonna be honest this time. This makes not a lot of sense and I have gone over it and over it and over it and over it. And there are some things about this I'm like, that doesn't do what you're telling me it does. Um, so I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but there's some stuff you kind of need to know. So water injection, also called ADI for anti-dentinant. Anti-dentination. It, it's not. It's like DE anti. All right. Yeah. Yeah, like your teeth, like your dent, dentine. There's a dentine your teeth. Yeah, that's the word I'm trying to say. Eight. So it's eight water injection. Can we get the submodel one more time? It's not critical. Don't. Okay, also called. It would be a crying shame for you to focus in on that and completely miss this and go, okay, yeah, but I know it. Um, also called. Called ADI. T I D E T O N A N T dentinate injection. All right, theory of operation. All right, this should be something you should understand quite well. When we talk about our power curve, 
rich lean power curve. Right here is best power, right? Mm -hmm. All right. But where are we going to be at wide open throttle? Rich. Best power, rich. 50, 50, 50, 50 degrees, rich. Well, I don't know if it's 50 degrees. I mean, do you know that? I don't know. Rich power. Rich rich. Rich. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any <laughs> off the top of my head. I don't. I think it's a lot more than 50 degrees. Um, but anyway, it's going to be extra rich. And why is it extra rich? Because of the detonation. Detonation. We don't want to detonate. Yeah. So we're going to add a bunch more fuel for that safety margin. But we've lost a bunch of power now. Yeah. So not only do we not have the power when we need it, but we're throwing a bunch more gas at the problem. So we're dumping fuel in, which used to not be a problem, and we're not getting best power. Lean it out. Okay, so if we lean it out at wide open throttle, we're going to? Detonate. Detonate. Well, that didn't help because yeah, we just melted know. the engine. Blew it up. All right, so in order, so what this uh, ADI does is it brings us back to best power. Yeah. It leans it to best power, but we have to, we have to solve the, the detonation part, and it does that by adding water. Okay, so I don't want to write it. Max power takeoff is about 10 to 1. Extra fuel is used for cooling. The overly, <coughs> overly rich mixture decreases the potential power output, right? It's kind of what I... Do you want me to write this? No. Okay. Um, using ADI allows the fuel air mix to be at best power, which means a loss of detonation and cooling, if you will. So we've lost detonation and cooling because we know fuel up at higher power settings definitely does it cool, has a cooling factor because we can play with the mixture. We know that it's you know rich at peak, lean at peak, and all that. So all right, so fuel air now can be set at the best power, uh, which means a loss of cooling. Uh, let's see. So water acts as a cooling agent plus increases the fuel performance rating octane. I'm gonna write that one. So water acts. Water acts as one, a cooling agent, and two, increases fuel performance rating. That's the word, like octane. Uh, results in, so results in an increase of takeoff power of 8 to 15 percent. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, does it? Well, eight to ten, eight to fifteen percent. Is it worth it? Yes. Well, if we look at an R twenty eight hundred that was rated at two thousand horsepower, fifteen um, percent is uh, three hundred horsepower. Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, especially if you have maybe four of these things on an airplane. Mm -hmm. It was twelve hundred horsepower total. Huh? It was twelve hundred horsepower total. You gain it. Uh, well, yeah. If you didn't use it. Yeah. But if you didn't, if you didn't use it. Well, you're kind of a glasses half empty kind yeah. of a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So ADI, ADI fluid consists consists of uh, water, and that is for the cooling. <laughs> and extra power. It has alcohol. Alcohol. Uh, in case you crash, then no. Uh, prevents freezing. And water soluble oil prevents corrosion.
it's called water soluble oil uh, I don't know what it is exactly uh, required equipment by the way we use water soluble oil in the cylinder line with the one where you grind the seats that's what's down there uh, you gotta have a storage tank for the water you have to have a pump to pump it we have a water regulator A derichment valve. Um, and necessary circuits and controls. You have to have a derichment valve. This is kind of a big deal because you can't just say I'm going to have a carburetor that when I go wide open throttle goes to best power because I have ADI and I will always remember to turn it on or I'll rig it somehow so that it goes on whenever I go to full throttle. You can't rely on that because you don't have as much water as you have fuel. So you have to have a system whereby the carburetor is going to act normally and then you tell it, hey, I'm going to use ADI now, you can go to best power. So when you flip on a switch, it goes to the carburetor and derichens the carburetor and allows the ADI to go in. Follow? And that was where we saw that on the PR58. Right here, the derichment valve. You okay? Yeah, he was wondering about the 8 to 15%. I was talking about the water, the turbine, the steam, the pressure. I said that. Where were you? Right. He was right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when I turn on the ADI, it's going to come. This is a normally open passage. Mm -hmm. So under normal circumstances, you just have a parallel path where fuel's always going through all the time. So at wide open throttle, it's nice and rich. And then when I turn on the ADI, the pump starts working and starts sending it out, this different nozzle, water's gonna come down here, press on this diaphragm, just close this down. Now if I run out of water, this will open back up and fuel starts to flow. So pilot turns the system on the cockpit, a switch is in series with the manifold pressure or oil pressure to ensure engine is high power settings. Yeah. yeah. Fifteen percent power increase. Okay. Remember, we went over best power to extra rich. Okay. We've lost fifteen percent of our horsepower to do that. So if I can go back to best power, I get some of that back, but I'm going to detonate, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I get best power, but I'm going to melt the pistons down in a few minutes, which is fine if you're, you know, running from the Kaiser. I guess when you, you know, you come up with some. Um, Whatever. So the switch, this is the switch is in series with manifold. So in other words, if you turned on ADI at idle, it wouldn't work. So in series with manifold means that there's going to be you have a switch and then it has to go through the manifold pressure switch, which is automatic. So at high manifold pressure settings, it's going to close that switch. So you turn on your switch, power goes from your switch through the manifold pressure to the pump. Yep. When you lose manifold, like you pull back to idle suddenly, then you lose the manifold and then we had electricity, and then that opens up, and then ADI shuts off automatically um, with a little light that says ADI on. Um, I think we can leave it there. This isn't used on any modern aircraft. Is Not it? that I'm aware of. This is like I've never seen it. World War II technology? Yes, absolutely. What time is it? I have a few minutes. This is not on the test. Uh, let's see. Unmetered fuel pressure D opens the meter pressuring control valve. Am I looking at the right thing? Metering pressure control valve. See if you can follow along. Yep. Unmetered fuel pressure off the very top. All right. Unmetered fuel pressure, which is D, mm -hmm. comes into here. So unmetered fuel pressure is going to come in here do this and open this up. 
which is kind of weird because to me it's already open. Yeah. And that's where I have trouble with this one. Um, opens the metering pressure control valve. If no pressure in D, water will not flow into engine. So here's the water tank uh, solenoid valve that will open to keep the, the water from dribbling through. Um, I'm sorry, it goes this way. Drain tank, the pump, check valve, screen. So water comes through here. Uh, the problem I have is there's a little bit of, I don't know if they misdrew it or something, but I see a little passageway through there, but weird to me. But pressure in D will open this, which allows it to go through here. And then it comes down to these delay bleeds. And the point of the delay bleeds, as you can see, there's a diaphragm and the water can press down the diaphragm. It's got to push these down, but there's nowhere for this pressure to go in here. So it's got to go through these bleeds, and this has to press down and go through these bleeds. It's going to take a while for it to press down. And these delays are allow enough time for, this is going to be full of fuel, by the way, for some unknown reason, it's full of fuel. And so the delays give it enough time to um, de-richen the carburetor. You have to de-richen it. Otherwise, you're overly rich, and you turn this on, you're going to go, blah, and it's going to bog down. You go, oh, wait a minute, it'll be okay in a minute. You know, meanwhile, you're kind of fun. So, um, let me see. No pressure in DE water will not float engine. If ADI pressure, um, if, ADI, if the ADI pressure is equal to D, then the valve closes, thus regulating. See, water flows to the check valve and opens it. Water flows to the check valve, opens it. Um, yeah, because if the ADI is turned off, fuel bleeds back into here. Delay bleeds allow check valves to open slowly. This allows time for derichment valve to operate before extra fuel in the ADI system is injected into the engine. Follow? Because mm -hmm. if this is full of fuel and I turn on the pump and the derichment valve hasn't had time to shut down and clear out that line, um, you're going to just dump a bunch of fuel in and make it really, really rich. So that's what's going on there. Uh, fuel initially flow through the uh, water alcohol jet. As a, anyway, that's what happens. I don't want to, you guys are like glossing over on me. When the tank is empty or the pilot shuts off the system, light goes out, derichment valve opens back up and uh, engine returns to the normal fuel air ratio. Are you good with that? What? Reading everything, but I know it's the screen like blinking in the corner because it's distracting me. What? The, the recording. Uh, anyways. Anyway.